What's going on guys? For about the past month, I've been building myself a homemade CNC plasma cutter. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever had in my garage. If you guys have never seen my channel before, this is just a warning. This video and this plasma cutter are going to be pretty strange. Check it out. So there is one thing that is truly frustrating about this machine. The vent fan for my controller box is always sucking my shirt in. Granted, it's a very small complaint and uh, I'm the guy who did it. It's my fault. So what is CNC plasma cutting? In essence, you're using a computer to control motors to do whatever you want them to do. I've used the same process to control a lathe, CNC routers, an Etch-a-Sketch. It's the same thing that 3D printers use, just in this particular case, it's controlling a plasma cutting torch. It's really valuable. You're basically able to design AutoCAD files, upload them into this computer, and it will cut it out of metal. Super valuable tool to have, not just from a production standpoint, but also from a prototyping standpoint. And for me, I'm going to be able to use this tool all the time. I'm super excited about it. And for a plasma cutter, I'm actually using the Yes Welder Cut 55 DS. Uh, yes Welder sent it to me as part of their affiliate marketing program. I don't think they really knew what they were getting themselves into. But if you want to get a machine like that or anything off of their website, you can use coupon code STRANGE at checkout for 10% off. Although this plasma cutter does work for this application, it is legitimately not designed for this and I don't recommend that you use one like this. What you should do is get one with the straight head that's made for a CNC machine, imagine that, and one that has a 100% duty cycle. There's all sorts of problems that you get from running one of these continuously. The biggest issue that I'm running into is I'm going through consumables like candy. I can program around some of the problems, but I'm gonna have them as long as I'm using this machine. I've built a lot of CNC related stuff on this channel and I try to keep two general principles. I try to keep my costs down as much as possible and I try to keep my designs as simple as possible because A, I'm not wasting too much money and B, I'm not wasting too much time because I do not have a lot of either of those. So for this construction, I decided to just go with two axes. So on the X axis, which is moving the gantry, I use two motors so there's a screw on each side, effectively just to keep the gantry square to the frame. And on the Y axis, one motor is gonna do just fine. But I figured this route would be plenty simple, it would be a lot faster for me to make it, and I could always add a Z axis if I want to. So obviously you can't actually make a CNC plasma cutter without a frame. In general, I think the frame is somewhat irrelevant, but in this particular case, I integrated my rails into the frame. So the rails that go from one upright to the other are actually my linear rails that the truck assemblies are going to be gliding against. So the steel does have slight variation because it's just regular from the mill two by two eighth inch angle. So there's nothing special about it. It's not precision ground or anything. So as the gantry is moving, there is gonna be a little bit of variation up and down. This isn't that big of a deal. Now, if you were making like a mill or a CNC router, it would be a lot bigger of an issue. But a CNC plasma cutter, first of all, is not that picky. And second of all, when you're cutting steel, the heat is gonna cause it to bow. It's gonna move around anyway. So there's no point in having a perfectly true gantry. It's just gonna be a lot of effort that ends up being wasted for this type of equipment. So these rails are gonna work just fine. There is nothing special about the drives built into this system. I'm just running NEMA 23 stepper motors to drive eight millimeter Acme screw. I went that route because the motors and the screw are eight millimeters so I can use straight couplers that have anti-vibration characteristics and I can use eight millimeter pillow block bearings. Pretty good setup. So I've done a lot of CNC stuff. So getting the motors to work was not a big deal. Nothing about this project really intimidated me but that's only because I wasn't really thinking it through. This torch has what's called a high frequency start to start the arc. I don't know if you guys have ever been experienced with this, but on my TIG welder, if I forget to hook the ground up, it's going to find home. It's gonna ground out somewhere, a lot of times through my body. It really sucks. So the first time that I finally got the torch to work with this plasma cutter through the controller, I forgot to hook the ground clamp up. 
and it grounded through my computer, which is a huge issue. It literally shut my computer off when I booted it back up, all of my parameters were gone, and the software was deleted off of the computer. So I reinstalled Mach 3, this is like two o'clock in the morning, reprogrammed everything, and I was like, okay, great. The computer works, that's all I can ask for. But it kept hitting the e-stop, even though I wasn't physically depressing the e-stop, and no matter what I did, I couldn't get the high frequency start to stop turning off the machine. So I finally just got rid of the e-stop, and then the computer finally died. Obviously that high frequency just killed it somehow. Fortunately, I'm a nerd. Well, actually I'm a human, but I was raised by nerds. And I had a spare CNC computer lying around. I know that's a really weird thing to say, but I'm really happy I had that because finding a new computer, that probably would have delayed this video at least a week. It's not that easy to find a computer with a parallel port anymore. <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was going to turn on and off the torch. Obviously I needed to do it through the software, but I assumed that I was going to just use an actuator or a solenoid to physically suck in the trigger. Fortunately, there's no valves or anything in the trigger, so I didn't have to do that. I'm able to just hack the system by unplugging the cannon plug in the end of the plasma cutter and shoving two wires in there and running those to my CNC controller. That ended up working fine and that simplified the process a lot. I'm really happy there was something about this build that went smoothly. I wanna keep this video for general audiences. I don't wanna to get too specific about this build, but there's a couple of things that I would have liked to know before I started. Now there's two of them that I guessed, the third one I never would have figured out. So the first one is shielded wire on the outside. Any wires that are not inside of an enclosure are shielded and terminated to ground. So if it picks up any noise or induction, it's gonna go straight to ground and not affect the electronics. The second is putting all of the electronics inside of an electrical enclosure to prevent that electromagnetic interference. That's gonna help a lot with your control side of things. And the third, which I had to research this, I did not figure this out myself, I pounded a grounding rod into the ground, a four foot one, and I terminated that through a real thick cable to the body of the machine. So any of that, they call it noise or induction, interference, whatever you wanna call it, is going to go down to that rod rather than to the electronics and just hover around. Those are the three most important things I think if you're making one of these machines. And with a regular CNC machine, you don't need any of that stuff. So that's all stuff that I had to learn through this process. So all of these designs you see here, I actually just made so I can test out the machine and get some good visuals for the video. These aren't actually appropriated to anybody. So I figured I would give them to you guys. For a chance to win one of these, all you have to do is like and share this video on the social media platform of your choice and then follow me on Instagram and send me a message that you shared this video and I'll select five people at random to get one of these. So, this thing works really well. For something that I made, it definitely shouldn't work as well as it does. Now, of course, I put a lot of time into it. There was a ton of tinkering and just adjusting small things to get this right. I think in one drive, I pulled the motor off 10 times to get it lined up with the shaft correctly. So this stuff isn't always easy. It's really time consuming. At the end of the day, it works really well. But I think the best part about it is I did the all-in cost calculations. And this is if I had purchased the plasma cutter, which they gave me. It was under a thousand bucks. So all in, my costs were about 957. So with a little bit of argon, you can call it a thousand. I think that's really good for this particular plasma cutter because the cut space is 32 by 40 inches and you can put a little bit bigger material on there, but anything within that 32 by 40 grid, you're able to cut with the plasma cutter. That's awesome for less than a thousand bucks. Granted, 
You gotta pay for it with your time. But if you're like me and you're not independently wealthy, you have a little bit more time than you have money, this isn't a bad route to go. Now please keep in mind, there's probably 50 hours into this build at least. I think there's honestly more than that. And remember, about half of that was the build. The rest of it was getting the electronics and the programming dialed in. So this is a deep water project, but I think it's really worth it. On another topic, I'm planning on doing a Q&A video. If you guys have any questions you'd like to ask me, feel free to shoot those into the comment section. I'll be happy to answer some questions for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.